Welcome to our very first free masterclass. We're gonna cover off some really great tricks on how to stay motivated, but let's start off with an introduction. Hi, my name is Nicola and I am so excited for you to be here. I'm a creative journalist and I love productivity and creative journaling and I've been journaling for many years. But as you can see, I was frustrated that I couldn't be both. I couldn't be creative and productive at the same time. So I personally found a way to do both. So let's get started and learn a couple of tricks on how to be creative and productive in your bullet journal. So first things first, before we dive into our learning, I just thought I should let you know a couple of things. The first thing is I'm gonna be talking quite a bit and I'm gonna have slides up on the screen as well as pictures and images to show you what we're talking about. Because we are going to cover quite a bit today, just have a look around you right now and see if there's anything around you that may cause a distraction. The more distractions we can eliminate, the more you can laser focus in on some of the stuff we're going to be learning. If you're watching this on your computer or if you're watching this on your phone, close everything else down. Try and avoid those notifications so that you can really concentrate on what we're going to cover today. If you're doing this while you're brushing your teeth, I suggest do stop doing that too. Although tooth hygiene is important, make sure that you're concentrating on the work that we're covering. Now here's why we want you to be distraction free. Because during this class, if you are distraction free and you are fully present, then you're going to get enormous value out of what we're going to cover off today. By multitasking and doing a whole bunch of other things, you're actually training your brain to underperform. And we don't need that considering we're definitely talking about productivity and time management. Distraction and social media can really be a dream and goal killer, especially in the times of Instagram at the moment. So give yourself the permission today to spend a couple of minutes to actually go through this content and really go through what you're gonna be learning today. Now, just make sure that you have downloaded the workbook. The link is below. This is one of the first questions all our beginners really start with. And regardless of if you're a beginner or if you've been doing this for a while, it's one of the questions that always comes up is what do I need to get started with? This is really simple. Realistically, for creative journaling, all you really need is a pen, a notebook, regardless of if it's dotted or lined, and potentially a ruler. That's really all you need to get started. But we kind of get drawn into this environment where, okay, well now we need these special highlighters or we need special marker pens or we need a whole bunch of these other things. When in reality, all you need is the basics. And keeping it basic also means that you have the opportunity to free your mind to be able to doodle or be able to create some really creative processes behind, hold on, let me just take a sip of water some creative processes behind that productivity that you're trying to achieve. Let's have a quick look at some of the options that are out there. This is the LT19 or Lechtern and it's got very creamy paper. It's got dotted pages and it's got numbered pages as well. If we go to a slightly cheaper option, it's also got really creamy pages, numbered pages, and most of these usually have an index or a key right up front, and this makes it really easy for you to use as a bullet journal. A couple of other options are like this. This is plum paper, and this is a pre-printed planner but it's extremely customizable. Every part of it, you can customize to your own needs. One of the other things that people tend to use quite, quite a bit is the Traveler's Notebook. And this is essentially a collection of blank notebooks that you can customize to your style and your needs, all wrapped up into one little bundle. You can swap them out as you run out, so you don't have to buy an entire new notebook every time. The next one we're looking at is a pre-printed planner. It's undated and blank. Unlike the plum paper, this one is the Archer and Olive and you can paint in it because the paper is 160 GSM. And finally, one of the other options that you have is the Happy Planner. Again, this is a printed planner, so you can be able to put a whole bunch of stuff in there. You can use the dates and months as it's printed out and it's very colorful and easy to open and close things because of the little discs on the side. If you've been journaling for a while, you'll know there's some really cool tools around that can make journaling easier for you, especially if you're using a dot grid. 
Here I've got my personal favorite stencil ruler and I've got kind of a circle thingy-majig and my two favorite pens. I also use the stencil on the right hand side because it really maps out the numbers for you on your journal as quickly as you can imagine. Let's start off with the Rose and Column stencil. This is by Ink by Gen G, and what it does is it evenly spaces out the columns that you and rows that you would regularly use in a dot grid notebook. It usually fits every single dot grid notebook you can find, which is 0.5 millimeters, and it makes it really easy to create spreads or monthly spreads. The next tool we look at is the We Are Memory Keeper stencil tool or journaling tool. What I like about this is it has a couple of stencils to make banners or headers and that's really helpful if you're going to be doing something quick and efficiently. It also has a circle maker up at the top which I'm not demonstrating here but what you can see is that you can see a couple of bullet points easily spaced and ready to go. My favorite thing about this stencil is that there's a monthly um, Kind of like little calendar stencil in there. It makes keeping your days and dates all aligned and it's pretty easy to use. You can't really go wrong with this stencil. It also has a ruler down the side which makes it really easy again to measure you know lines that you might be drawing etc. I like all of these tools and I really appreciate that they make journaling a lot easier and a lot more fun. One of the first things we need to do is set in a strategic intent for your journal. Regardless of if you're just starting or if you've been doing this for a while, you can't really get a grasp on what you're going to be using your journal for if you don't have that strategic intent. So what I recommend is grabbing a piece of paper and writing down what you want to use your journal for most. Now in the workbook, we've got a blank space for you to do this. List some of the things that are really important for you to make sure that your journal will work for you. So I want to make sure that I am, you know, managing my appointments, managing my kids' schedules, and just seeing what really is important to me helps me define what is going to go into my journal. Take a moment to pause and write down some of your intentions and what you'd like to use your journal for. Now that you've set the intent of your journal, what you're going to be using your journal for. This is the point at which, <clears throat> and sorry, I seem to keep getting a bug in my throat. This is the point at which you need to start creating the foundations of your journal. Now there's a couple of basic things that you need to put into your journal to make sure that it's working functionally as a planner, as a creative outlet. And those things include something that can tell you what's going to happen in the future. We usually call this a future log and we usually keep this right up at the front. But if you're starting mid-month or if you are starting from scratch in a journal you're currently using, then put it at the back of your journal. There's nothing wrong or there's no kind of set rules to tell you what you need to do. Granted, when you go and Google online, you're going to see tons of future logs. You're going to see tons of things that people put into their journals. But no, strip that back and only put in what you're actually going to use. If you're not going to use a future log, then why put it in there? If you're not going to use a key and you're going to keep getting confused by a key, then don't put it in there. Make sure that you're only putting things into your journal that matter to you. Don't look at what other people are doing. It matters to you. You can get inspiration from others, absolutely. Not saying don't do that. But what I am saying is don't put things in there just because you've seen them somewhere else. Put them in there because they have meaning to you and they meet those intentions that you have. The next thing we're going to talk about is keeping it simple. The most important thing you can do in your creative journal or your productive journal is to keep it simple. If you're starting out, make sure that you are using something really basic because you at this point don't know if it's going to work for you. And if you over clutter something or if you overcrowd something, you're just going to feel overwhelmed and you're not going to be engaged to want to use it every day. You're not going to be engaged to really make it a habit rather than something that you do you know sporadically it's it's really important to make sure that you keep it as simple as possible when starting out to make it as easy as possible for you to succeed 
Essentially, you're setting yourself up for failure if you are over it with things that you don't need. So tap the pause button and write down in your workbook some of the ways that you're going to use your planner to be uncluttered, to be a little bit minimalistic to start off with, and what it is that you're going to use as a strategy to make sure that that happens. All right, now that you've got some idea around what it is that you're going to be putting in your notebook or your journal or your planner, what I want you to do is take a pause right now and I want you to commit to doing one action step at the end of this masterclass. I want you to go into our Facebook group and I want you to share that action step with us. It is so important to get accountability for what it is that you're going to be doing next. So take a moment, join the group, Comment and tell us what it is that you're going to be doing as your first action step and write it down in your workbook so that you can hold yourself accountable and that we can help you and support you on your journey to making your first step. Okay, let's hop straight into the next topic, which is setting time aside in your journal. The first tool we're going to look at to kind of prioritize your time in your journal is a hybrid between the well-known um, Covey, kind of matrix where you have a level of urgency versus importance and how that kind of ranks and you rank your tasks based on importance and urgency is it very important or not important very urgent or not urgent and that kind of gives you an indication of how you should prioritize those tasks then what I've done is I've used Eisenhower's 135 method where you have one really important um, task to complete in a day, three medium tasks and then five smaller tasks. This helps you really laser focus what that first task is going to be. And I suggest while you're setting up your journal or if this is something new to you, I suggest putting journaling time right at the top. It's so important to make that time clear to yourself and to others that you are prioritizing the time around that. So there's one way of trying to get like an itch a little bit more time into your schedule to be able to create that time to journal. All right, so let's get into creating our perfect schedule. What's really important about a creating a schedule is we get to kind of define what we think our ideal week is going to look like. Now we all know that that is not exactly how the week is going to plan out, but it gives you a really good indication of where you're putting your time aside and how you're kind of time blocking in the capacity to give yourself your own self care and your own time. So it's really important to, even if it's a basic one where you only do one day, potentially you have quite repetitive days, or if you've got quite a varying week, make a list like the one here. What you can then do as well is on the next page, when you start planning out your month, you can actually use that against other people's plans if that's potentially something that you have in your, your life, you know, you've got kids, a partner, whatever it might be, you'll be able to better structure your time because, you know, at the end of the day, time is a gift. When you're organized and you're arriving on time and when you are putting time aside for something and being present in the moment for something, you're giving someone else the gift of your time. So it's really important to think about that when you're structuring out your weeks. Right, so let's wrap up today's uh, session with our five tips to be more productive and creative. The first one is set time aside. Remember to set time aside to journal. Give yourself the space and the gift to be able to start looking into your new hobby or if it's a hobby that you've been doing, make sure that you're really looking into it as something that is a priority for you. The second thing is leave space on your personal page to doodle. You know, so often we get overbogged by these beautiful spreads that look really creative but are not productive for you. Make sure that you're leaving that space there so that you can see what your, your kind of capacity is for that creativity side. Avoid comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy and you know, you don't want to be caught in a trap where you are creating something and going, but it doesn't look as good as so-and-so's. 
you know, like I'm having fun here with my voice and being silly, but you know, the reality is, is so often we go onto social media and we say, but this is not looking as good as so-and-so's. It's not looking good as Sally's. I wish my handwriting was neater. This is your journey and your journal. So make it as unique as possible. Your journey is very different from my journey, from and my journey is very different to pretend to Sally's journey. So just make sure that you kind of swim in your own lane and don't get bogged down by that comparison because it really will just eat away or erode your capacity for being really productive. The next thing is, is to set yourself some clear goals and intentions. Now we don't cover that in the workbook at the moment. We cover that in the full ebook, which you can grab from the website. We'll put up some links a little bit later and we'll also put up a discount code for you to be able to purchase that. It's an immediate download, so it's really easy for you to grab. And that goes through setting goals and really laser focusing those intentions over your entire year. So important to do. Then finally, as we kind of wrap up for today, we move on to make sure that you're having fun. If you're not having fun, then journaling isn't for you. And if you're not having fun, then something is very wrong here. And don't take yourself too seriously. Journaling is about a creative outlet for you. It's about being more expressive. So have fun with it. Do not get bogged down with it being perfect. And this page needs to be perfect. And I need to make sure that everything is looking amazing. And I'm so such a perfectionist. This is never going to work for me. It will, but you have to just let yourself be you and make sure that you're feeling confident to take on those goals and take on those intentions. Because at the end of the day, you've got the capacity to do amazing things when you set your mind to it. So that's all from us today. And I hope you've enjoyed this webinar. If you have any comments, leave them below and we can reply to them as soon as possible. All right, as you can see, the next part of your workbook is all around the 31 days to a better Bujo challenge. Try it out, see how you go. And in the Facebook group, we really support you kind of stepping through every part of that journey. So if you have any questions or if you need some support, reach out to us. Also, you can download our full ebook, which is available, and we'll pop through those bonuses right now. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can find us all over the Instawebs. We're on Instagram, we're on Pinterest, we're on YouTube, and we are all over the place. So come and join us, come and chat. I usually hang out over at Instagram, so feel free to slide into my DMs and ask any questions that you might have.